the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution happy morning students so i hope you would have got an idea about the redox reaction chapter something different that we have learned in that chapter how to balance the chemical equation using two methods and some of the reactions which we have already learned in our 10th standard so today we are going to see something that is a very interesting topic an element which plays a very important role in the periodic table and this element we have been um using or we have been coming across in our daily life in many situations that is the element which we call it as hydrogen hydrogen is the most abundant element in the nature it is found like you can see in the combined state right and it has one proton and one neutron and you can also know that it has a very small atom and it is placed at one end of the periodic table so when we see the position of hydrogen it is the first element in the periodic table the first element which we call hydrogen helium lithium so having an atomic number 1 so the configuration is 1s1 belongs to the first shell in the s sub shell with one electron in the s sub shell it can be called as an alkali metal also it comes into the category of a halogen it is called as an alkali metal because it can lose one electron to become a positive oxidation state and it can be also under the consideration of a halogen because it needs only one electron to attain the noble gas which is helium the next element in the periodic table the 18th group element in the periodic table so that's why it can come as an alkali metal and also as a halogen now apart from other alkali metals if you see like it can combine to form halides sulfides you there are so many compounds that it can form with other elements in the periodic table the most important water combines with the electronegative element and forms different types of compounds unlike the alkali metals it has a very high ionization energy we know what is an ionization energy the energy required to remove the loosely bounded electron from an isolated gaseous atom so when i talk about that here the nucleus is very close to one electron that is this is my hydrogen the nucleus is there inside only one electron only one electron is present which can easily attract the nucleus so what happens to remove this electron it is not that easy so very high ionization energy is required to remove that electron of course it doesn't show any metallic character under normal conditions it does not behave like an alkali metal when it is grouped into the first group metal it does not show any specific character now when we talk about hydrogen molecule that is dihydrogen it is the most abundant element and in the solar atmosphere it is the principal element that is the main core element in the solar system and it is also found in plant animal tissues mostly found in plant and animal tissues when we talk about isotopes we know what are isotopes which are having the same atomic number and different mass number so when we talk about isotopes there are three isotopes for hydrogen h11 protium h12 deuterium and h13 tritium where you can see here their mass number actually changes deuterium is also called as heavy water 
which is heavy hydrogen or I would just say in nuclear reactors where D2O that is heavy water is being used as a coolant right and tritium that is the most important radioactive element in the table. All these are having the same chemical properties because they have the same configuration. They have a difference in the bond dissociation enthalpy. What is bond dissociation enthalpy? Bond dissociation refers to breaking up of the bond or splitting the bond. So, the energy required to break the bond is very different for the three different isotope. That is why the rate of reaction is also different. It varies from one to the another. These are the main things that we need to learn about the intro part of hydrogen. Now, we will get back into the preparation and then we will learn about the properties of hydrogen. So, we will see the preparation of hydrogen, how it is prepared. The first one is the laboratory preparation where zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid or you can also mention it as H plus ion to give zinc chloride and then hydrogen gas gets evolved. So, that is how hydrogen is prepared using a laboratory preparation. You have one more preparation where zinc reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium zincate and hydrogen gas being evolved again. So, these two are the laboratory preparation. The next one is the commercial preparation that is the production of hydrogen commercially. And how does it happen? First one is electrolysis of acidified water where you use the platinum electrodes. So, water on electrolysis where traces of platinum is being used you get hydrogen and oxygen. Similarly, you can also get the high purity of hydrogen that is around 99.95 percentage of hydrogen can be obtained when you electrolyze warm aqueous barium hydroxide between the nickel electrodes. These are just the theory which you need to learn the different way of preparation. The next one which we have learnt in our 10th standard molten electrolysis of sodium chloride NaOH and Cl minus at anode chlorine what happens loses electrons to become chlorine gas at cathode water undergoes reduction by accepting electrons to get converted to hydrogen gas. So, overall reaction we can write Na plus plus Cl minus plus water gives chlorine plus hydrogen plus Na plus plus OH minus. So, here also hydrogen gas has been evolved at the cathode that is the reduction electrode and you have one more preparation where passing steam over hydrocarbons where you can see here any hydrocarbon page number 286 any hydrocarbon when it is treated with water it gives carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So, that mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen is called as water gas. Again, it is a one mark question. Please underline children. The combination of carbon monoxide CO and H2 together it is called as water gas. Okay. As this mixture of water gas is used for the synthesis of methanol which means to prepare methanol. What is the formula of methanol? It is CH3OH. So, if I have to prepare methanol synthetically, I can use the reactant as carbon monoxide and water which is a water gas. Okay. Now, synthesis, okay and it is also called as synthesis gas or syn gas. So, please mark it important. The process of producing syn gas from coal is called as coal gasification. So, what is coal gasification? The process of preparing syn gas from the coal. So, what is coal? Carbon plus water gives CO plus H2. What is the preparation children? Carbon when it reacts with water you get carbon monoxide plus water. So, this combination we call it as syn gas or the whole process is called as coal gasification. The production of dihydrogen can be increased by reacting carbon monoxide of syn gas mixtures with steam in the presence of chromate as catalyst. Now, if I want to increase this production of hydrogen, I can use a catalyst to make more production much better. Okay. Now, this carbon monoxide, 
there is a carbon monoxide here. Now, when it reacts with water, see we saw here carbon plus water giving carbon monoxide plus hydrogen. This carbon monoxide, when it reacts with water, what do we get? We get carbon dioxide plus hydrogen, right? Instead of carbon monoxide in the first step, when carbon monoxide reacts with water, we get carbon dioxide plus hydrogen. Now that we reaction we call it as a water shift gas reaction. It is mentioned here in page 286, water gas shift reaction. Carbon dioxide is removed by scrubbing with sodium arsenide solution. So till that it is important children, what is syngas? How methanol can be prepared using syngas? What is coal gasification? What is water gas shift reaction? Now we will learn about the properties of dihydrogen. So now we will learn what are the properties. So when I say properties of hydrogen, we have both physical and chemical properties. Now physical properties of hydrogen includes, it is a colorless gas, it's an odorless gas, tasteless gas and it's a combustible gas. So it does not have any color, there is no fragrance or smell, does not have any taste but it's a combustible, it can burn easily. It is lighter than air but it is insoluble in water, it does not get dissolved in water. Some of the chemical properties are, it reacts with different different elements in the periodic table. Like when it combines with the halogens, it forms the corresponding halides. Hydrogen can combine with chlorine, bromine, fluorine, iodine to form the corresponding halides. But fluorine even it can react in the dark conditions but with iodine it needs the presence of a catalyst. When it combines with dioxygen it forms water and the process is entirely exothermic means it gives out a large amount of heat energy. When it combines with nitrogen it forms ammonia which is the main manufacture of ammonia is the Haber's process. Then when it combines with metals, it forms a corresponding hydrides. So M refers to any alkaline metal like sodium, potassium, lithium where it forms a corresponding hydrides. Now when it reacts with metal ions, it reduces the metal ions to its corresponding metal. Like when it reacts with palladium 2 plus, it gives palladium metal. Or when it reacts with the oxides of the metal like metal oxides, it converts the oxide, metal oxides to the corresponding metal. So you can see hydrogen combining with iron oxide to form iron and water. So this is what is given in your textbook already. So you can verify the reactions much more better when you see it through your eyes. Organic compound. Now these two, you need not learn the reaction, just learn the theory. Hydrogenation of vegetable oil, addition of hydrogen takes place in the presence of nickel as catalyst. Next one is hydroformylation of olefins. Olefins having double bond will get converted to a alcohol during the process of reacting with hydrogen. So these are the properties of hydrogen. You have the uses given in your textbook. So there are almost 1 to 5, some 8 uses. Like it is used in the manufacture of Vanaspati ghee, it is used in the preparation of methanol, it is used in preparation of metal hydrides and also for the preparation of hydrogen chloride and atomic hydrogen used as a rocket fuel in space research and also in the fuel cells for generating electrical energy for the Apollo stations. So many uh, uses are given, you can just learn any a uh, few uses that will be helpful for you to write in your exam but of course study or read all the uses so that when it comes in one mark you will be able to write it. Now we will just learn about the hydrides of hydrogen. These are classified into few types so let us learn one by one. Now we will see about the different type of hydrides. As I told you hydrogen combines with the metals, non-metals to form the different hydrides. The first type of hydrides is called as ionic hydrides or saline hydrides. Now these are formed by the S block elements which are more electropositive. 
that is they are the alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals group 1 and 2 elements in the periodic table. Now they possess a covalent character they are, that is the lighter metal hydrides like example lithium hydride, beryllium hydride, magnesium hydride etc. Now to see the characteristic feature they are crystalline in nature, they are non-volatile and they do not conduct electricity in their solid state because we know the electrons do not move or the ions do not move they are rigid but when they melt definitely they conduct electricity and they react violently with water to produce the hydrogen gas. So if you see sodium hydride reacts with water to give sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. Now lithium actually being unreactive metal this hydride of lithium can react with other elements or compounds to form the hydrides that is which are the reducing agents like lithium aluminium hydride and lithium borohydride. So these are some of the ionic or saline hydrides which we should learn. The next category is the covalent hydrides or molecular hydrides. When I say covalent hydrides these are formed by the P block elements which are the non-metals like CH4, H2O, ammonia, HF also etc. Now these are basically into three different types electron deficient, electron precise and electron rich. From the name it is very clear that electron deficient means they have less electrons to have the Lewis structure. Example group 13 elements when they combine with hydride like diborane they have very few electrons to write the Lewis structure. When I say electron precise they have perfect number of electrons like group 14 which combines with hydrogen to form CH4 they have the exact number of electrons and when we say electron rich they have one or two electrons more than the required number that is like group 15 when I combine with hydrogen like ammonia. So these are the basic classification of covalent hydrides. The next type of hydrides is the metallic or non-stoichiometry. If you have the pencil children page 289 under metallic hydrides you have a pink box at the bottom from there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The ninth line from that paragraph you can just write the property of absorption of hydrogen on the transition metal is used in the catalytic reduction that is hydrogen is getting absorbed by the transition metals. We have transition metals you know the 3D, 4D, 5D elements are the transition metals. So this has been used in the hydrogenation reactions. Some of the metals can accommodate a large volume of hydrogen and they are also used in the storage media. So why do we need this is because hydrogen has got its application even in the transition metals. Now what are metallic or non-stoichiometry? These are formed mainly by the D block and the F block elements because as we know D block elements are called as transition metals. Okay, So you have the examples that given there lanthanum hydride. Uh, titanium hydride, zirconium hydride and uh, just put a mark uh, under underline it with a pencil ok. They are also called as interstitial hydrides. What do you mean by interstitial? See I have a structure like this right apart from the corners of the cube they occupy somewhere inside the free spaces. So those are called as interstitial hydrides. So these are the basic classification out of which these are very important for you. Now we will be getting into to learn about water. Definitely the concern videos will be put to you to understand better. Okay. We shall learn about water. We know water is the most important substance in the nature and it's a most precious substance also which is required for the entire universe right it's a universal solvent and we know 75 percent of our body consists of water so now to talk about water we know it has several applications in all the industries some of the properties also you might be knowing right it forms a hydrogen bond formation it has a high boiling point high melting point Okay, and the heat capacity, dielectric constant, 
which are all given in your textbook. It's all a theory part. Now, when we talk about the structure of water, we know it has a bent structure which we have learnt in VSEPR theory with hydrogen at both the sides and oxygen in the center because it has a lone pair. Because of the difference in electronegativity, it's a polar molecule and exhibits a dipole moment having two delta negative charges with hydrogen bearing a delta positive charge on each hydrogen atom. Now the crystalline form of this water is called as ice and we know the density of ice is actually less than water that's why we know ice floats on water right in um, uh, I mean in for America or you know, even in Antarctica you can see when ice melts the ice actually will be floating on the water because of its less density compared to water. Ice has got a three dimensional structure and when it was observed through the x-ray dimension it was very clear that each oxygen atom was surrounded by four other oxygen atoms in a tetrahedral fashion. That's why it has a rock salt or some sort of a crystalline structure. So these are some of the things that we should learn about the structure of ice, right. Now when we talk about the chemical properties of water, it has an amphoteric nature. What do you mean by amphoteric? It shows both acidic as well as basic character. That is wherever it needs to behave as an acid, it behaves as an acid. Wherever it should show a basic character, it behaves as a basic character. So here water when it combines with ammonia a base, it gives hydroxyl ion and an ammonium ion. And here when it combines with an acid like hydrogen sulphide, it gives hydronium ion and hydrogen sulphide ion. So these are the most important where it shows both acidic and basic character. It also undergoes auto ionization which we call as self ionization where it reacts with its own water molecule to form a cation and an anion. So when water combines with water it forms hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. So that shows that it has a auto ionization property. The next important property of water is it reacts with metal and shows oxidation reduction reaction simultaneously where you can see sodium with 0 becomes Na plus undergoing oxidation and here hydrogen from plus 1 it is undergoing a reduction. So that shows that it also supports the redox reaction and when the pentoxides undergoes a reaction with water it forms an acid orthophosphoric acid right and when it reacts with transition metals that's the most important that is there in the coordination compounds which we will be learning in the next year it forms complexes with water as an hydrate right like when we know copper sulfate it is actually CuSO4 dot 5 H2O because of this five hydrate molecules this water it behaves as a it this copper sulfate shows a blue color now once you remove all the water molecule it becomes colorless so this hydrate formation plays a very important role when it combines with a transition metal series so these are the important things that we should learn with respect to water now the next important topic for this chapter is the hard water and soft water where we'll be learning about temporary hardness permanent hardness and how to remove the hardness of water so when we were learning about water we will now learn something which is very important which we do in our daily life that is dealing with water that is hard water and soft water now when we call hard water and soft water it is very simple that soft water do not contain any calcium and magnesium salts in it that is when you apply a soap on the clothes you get lather foam so when it forms lather with water or with soap that water we call it as soft water now hard water are those which contain the calcium and magnesium salts how the salts are present in the form of hydrogen carbonate in the form of chlorides or in the form of sulfates and they do not form lather there is no foam formed when it is reacting with soap now hard water can be forming a precipitate when it reacts with the soap 
Now this is the formula for the soap which is sodium stearate that when it reacts with the metal it forms a precipitate down which can be filtered off which can be removed right. Now such hardness are called as temporary hardness. The equation is given in your textbook that is why these hard water cannot be used for laundry purposes and also in the boilers because they deposit their salts in the boiler or in the cloth which can damage the entire product. So that's why we don't use hard waters for laundry and also as boilers. It's an important one mark question children. So when I talk about hardness, there are two type of hardness. One is a temporary hardness, the other one is a permanent hardness. Something that is temporary can easily be removed. So that is which is permanent needs a very little task more to remove it permanently. So temporary hardness consists of only calcium and magnesium in the form of hydrogen carbonate. We have two methods to remove the temporary hardness. One is by boiling, the other one is using the Clark method. In boiling, the soluble that is we are going to boil the water where the soluble magnesium hydrogen carbonate is getting converted to insoluble magnesium hydroxide. Similarly, the soluble calcium hydrogen carbonate is converted into insoluble calcium carbonate. So when you convert it into the insoluble form, they remain in the form of precipitate and that precipitate can be removed by the filtration method. So that is the simple boiling method. The next one is the Clark method. In the Clark method, magnesium hydrogen carbonate will be reacting with lime. When it reacts with lime, what do we get is calcium carbonate, magnesium hydroxide and water where it's very clear that magnesium hydroxide and calcium carbonate both can be removed as a precipitate in the form of filtration. So once the process is done, you can do the filtration to remove the precipitate. So these are the methods where we use to remove the temporary hardness of water. Now we'll be seeing how to remove the permanent hardness of water. Now we will learn about how to remove the permanent hardness of water. Now permanent hardness of water can be removed using four different methods. First one is by the treatment with washing soda. Second one is using Calgon method. Third one is ion exchange method. The next one is synthetic resin method where here the hardness of water is due to the presence of calcium and magnesium chlorides and sulfates. Now the first treatment is with washing soda, a simple equation where the magnesium chloride or calcium chloride or a sulfate when it's treated with washing soda the corresponding magnesium and calcium carbonates get precipitated with the sodium chloride and sodium sulfate. So in both the reaction the carbonates are formed and they get precipitated remain in the solution and can be filtered off. The second method is using Calgon method where this is Calgon sodium hexameta. So this is the Calgon where this gives sodium plus plus Na4P6O18 you need to by heart this and this when it reacts with any calcium or magnesium salt a complex is formed which will permanently be remained in the solution and that can be remained or can be removed using the filtration. The third method is ion exchange from the name it's very clear that the calcium and magnesium ions are going to get exchanged with the ions which we are using. This process can also be called as zeolite process or permutate process where the hydrated sodium aluminium silicate which is called as zeolite can be represented as NaZ which when reacts with the salt of magnesium and calcium chloride and sulfate will precipitate the salt and the ion get exchanged. So that is how we remove the magnesium and calcium salt even the permanent water. The last one is synthetic resin method where we use the cation exchangers, a big exchange uh, boiler will be there where the cations like sodium, magnesium and calcium are getting exchanged with one another which has a large organic molecule which is insoluble in water called as resin and that resin will be converted into RNA 
with the treatment of sodium chloride and that resin will exchange with the magnesium and calcium ion. See this is a theory part you will be understanding only when you see the video. So definitely when the video is there keep the textbook with you simultaneously go through what is given in the video that will help you to understand more easily because exactly how the calcium and magnesium ions are being exchanged with the resins you will be able to follow clearly. Okay children. So now with this removal of temporary and permanent hardness is over. We will be getting into the last topic of this chapter which is hydrogen peroxide. Hard and soft water. The hardness of water is due to the presence of soluble salts of magnesium and calcium which can be bicarbonates which can be chlorides and sulfates. The hardness of water is due to these calcium and magnesium salts which become insoluble in the water and does not form lather with soap. But the same thing when we take a soft water there are no insoluble salts of calcium or magnesium which is in the form of a soluble form and they form lather with soap. The hardness of water can be removed and it is of two types one is temporary hardness and permanent hardness. The temporary hardness is due to the calcium and magnesium bicarbonate salts and it is removed by boiling. Now when a hard water, a temporary hard water is kept for boiling, the soluble bicarbonate will be decomposed into soluble insoluble carbonate. So the calcium bicarbonate which will react with the water to form calcium carbonate, water and carbon dioxide when it is boiled. Similarly magnesium bicarbonate will be converted to magnesium hydroxide and carbon dioxide. Now this hardness of water can also be removed using Clark's process where we use slaked lime that is calcium hydroxide which when added to the hard water the calcium hydroxide which reacts with the water will convert the magnesium or calcium bicarbonate into calcium carbonate which is insoluble and can be removed by precipitate. Permanent hardness is due to the calcium and magnesium chlorides and sulfates which can also be removed using sodium carbonate which is washing soda. Washing soda which can be added to the water either it is a temporary hardness or permanent hardness will react with the water to form the calcium and magnesium salts which will combine with the sodium carbonate and forms calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate which are insoluble. Summary, you can just go through the content and understand why hardness of water arises and how it can be removed by the process of boiling Clark's process and adding sodium carbonate that is washing soda. So hence we can remove the hardness of water using the following process. Thank you children. The hardness of water can be removed using ion exchange method and synthetic resins method. Let us learn each method one by one. In the ion exchange method, zeolite is used which has a structure made up of sodium, aluminium and silicate. The formula for zeolite is as follows which is written here and in short it can be written as Na2Z. This zeolite helps to remove the permanent hardness of water where in a container zeolite is placed 
inside and the hard water is poured from the top when the hard water passes through the zeolite there is an exchange of ions between sodium and the calcium magnesium of the hard water such exchange will make the insoluble calcium zeolite to get precipitated through filtration and the soft water containing sodium can be removed separately this is how ion exchange method is used now let us learn about synthetic resins method which is more important and a better method when compared to ion exchange method here resins made up of sodium ions are being used to remove the hardness of water the hard water is poured through the resin where the ions get exchanged that is the sodium ion and the resin get exchanged with the calcium and magnesium of the hard water and get precipitated out and the water which contains sodium ion is collected separately that's the hardness of water can be removed now we are going to learn about hydrogen peroxide which is h2o2 now this hydrogen peroxide is also called as a spirit like when you get injured anywhere in your hand you get an infection in the hospital they first spray a spirit that is actually hydrogen peroxide okay children so let's see the hydrogen peroxide how it is prepared it is prepared when it is treated with barium peroxide in the in the presence of sulfuric acid where you get hydrogen peroxide which is formed along with barium sulfate and water the second preparation is not that important you may just have to go through it the next one is with 2 ethyl anthraquinol which is undergoing an oxidation to form hydrogen peroxide the same can undergo reduction to form the reactant so this is a reversible reaction so two important preparations are there then comes the physical properties where it is a colorless gas sometimes it has a very pale blue color also it is miscible with water that's why it has in the form of a spray and when you see hydrogen bonding definitely it is there but very not that high when compared to that of water so and it has a several melting point and boiling point as per according to its own structure so when you talk about a structure it has a non planar sheet like structure with hydrogen two oxygens and two hydrogens with a bond angle of 101.5 degree and a bond length of 147.5 degree meter picometer chemical properties basically it acts as an agent for an oxidizing action in acidic medium and basic medium and also reducing actions in acidic and basic medium so when i say acidic medium it reacts with lead sulfide to form lead sulfate it reacts with hcl in acidic medium to form hydronium ion it also has a reaction with the basic medium like combines with ion 2 plus to become ion 3 plus giving out hydroxyl ion one more reaction is given with the reducing medium they may ask you in the fill in the blanks format when you talk about the storage it is you can easily get exposure to light i mean it it can get slowly decompose what is decomposing it can split into its various products so it, that's why it is always kept in a plastic vessel it is stored properly in a wax lined glass bottles it is not kept open because it can slowly decompose in the atmosphere uses if you see it is used as a hair bleach is used as a mild disinfectant in the manufacture of chemicals and also for textiles in the as a bleaching agent and also as paper pulp different uses are given just go through it children the last topic is heavy water which i'll be putting a beautiful video for you for uh, understanding heavy water easily because i told you d2o is an isotope of hydrogen which has a very good application in the nuclear industry it is used as a moderator d2o as a coolant also in the nuclear chemistry this dihydrogen when i said it is used as a fuel especially uh, we will talk about hydrogen oxygen fuels where the hydrogen and oxygen are being generated converted into water for the apollo space stations it has a wide application there but the pollutants in the combustion of dihydrogen will be less when compared to that of petrol that's why the most common use has been dihydrogen as a fuel 
now you have the last paragraph 295 where you are talking about the hydrogen economy so just go through it children because it can just come in one mark question it is just an extra information for you um, go through the uh, textbook the things which are given in hydrogen economy and if you have any doubt in this kindly let me know okay now this video since this is being taken in one single video uh, the time limit may be more for you do not get exhausted or do not think that how am i going to complete it you can pause the video say today i watched for 20 minutes this chapter stop it the next day you can open the link again and you can again check the video continue seeing the video again you can stop it for another half an hour the next day you can again open it and continue watching it okay so do not over strain yourself the video is always being there in the youtube link so you can it is up to your comfort when you want feel uh, fresh and energetic that you can watch the video you can do it okay children so with this this chapter hydrogen these are hardly 9 10 pages chapter that's why i've just put it in one video not just wasting times in uh, putting separate separate links and the next two chapters are also easier and um, so we'll try to focus on the topics which are important for our 12th standard okay so with this we'll wind up the class for today see you in the next class take care bye stay home stay safe bye compounds of hydrogen let us learn about the compounds of hydrogen water made up of two hydrogen atom and oxygen atom hydrogen peroxide made up of two hydrogen atom and two oxygen atom are the important compounds of hydrogen hydrogen peroxide is an unstable compound and it can immediately decompose to form water and oxygen let us now learn about the preparation of hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide can be prepared using four methods let us learn each method one by one from barium peroxide when barium peroxide is acidified with dilute sulfuric acid barium sulfate gets precipitated with a little amount of water and hydrogen peroxide the precipitate can be filtered off and the water can be removed and thus we get hydrogen peroxide the next method is the electrolysis of 50 percent of sulfuric acid which is a laboratory preparation the setup is like this where you have sulfuric acid 50 percent which is is an electrolyte and you have platinum anode and graphite cathode sulfuric acid splits at h plus ion and hso4 minus ion where at anode hso4 ions get under undergoes electrolysis and forms peroxy disulfuric acid with the release of two electrons at cathode h plus ion gains those two electrons and liberates hydrogen gas now peroxy disulfuric acid when it is hydrolyzed in water you form hydrogen peroxide with the formation of sulfuric acid the third preparation is from sodium peroxide which is again a laboratory preparation sodium peroxide when it is reacting with 20 percent of ice cold sulfuric acid sodium sulfate get precipitated with the formation of hydrogen peroxide sodium peroxide is cooled up to 271 kelvin where it it forms a white crystal of sodium sulfate hydrate and that crystal can be filtered off and you get the pure hydrogen peroxide and the last is the preparation from 2 ethyl anthraquinol 2 ethyl anthraquinol when it is reacted with a mixture of benzene 
and cyclohexanol you get air with the oxidation and 2 ethyl anthroquinone as a main product with hydrogen peroxide as a byproduct 2 ethyl anthroquinone undergoes reduction to form 2 ethyl anthroquinol when it is undergoing reduction from anthroquinone with hydrogen and palladium so these are the four preparation of hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide is widely used to bleach different materials like cotton cotton silk feathers and also other materials the bleaching power is due to the oxidizing nature of the coloring matter water molecule have you observed the difference between an ordinary water molecule and a heavy water molecule in ordinary water molecule we have two hydrogen atoms and in a heavy water molecule we have two deuterium atoms which is a heavy isotope of hydrogen so that is the difference between water molecule and heavy water molecule now this water molecule is used for the preparation of heavy water molecule when it undergoes prolonged electrolysis what happens there is you have the setup of an electrolysis where you have a steel cathode and a nickel anode which acts as anode and cathode at different parts so the electrolyte is a solution of sodium hydroxide which is 3% of concentration which on electrolysis will be producing the heavy water these are the different stages as we don't have this in our syllabus content you just have to know the few stages where at the sixth stage you get a pure heavy water which is obtained okay thank you children this is the preparation of heavy water